Hello and welcome to the R tutorial on regression. Today we are going to explore the data set called therapy. This data set has two variables, the patient anxiety level and the patient satisfaction level with their therapy. We are going to see if patient anxiety level can predict patient satisfaction level with the therapy treatment. Before we get started, we need to see if this relationship is linear. To do this, we need to make a scatter plot of our graphs. To make a scatter plot, we go to graphs, scatter plot. We will need to choose our x variable, also called the independent variable or the predictor value, to be anxiety. We will choose our y variable, also known as the dependent variable or the response variable, to be satisfaction. After that, we want to check out our options. There are a lot of options available for our scatter plot. When examining our scatter plot, we just want to look at our raw data, so we make sure that all of these options are unchecked. We also need to make sure to add an appropriate title and make sure to add our name before submitting for homework or prelabs. For this graph, I'm going to call it scatter plot of patient satisfaction and anxiety level by stats 250 demo and click OK. For max, we might need to resize the window so that we get the x-axis label below. We see a moderate negative linear relationship with no obvious outliers, so linear regression seems appropriate and we'll proceed with our data analysis. To perform regression in R Commander, go to Statistics, Fit Models, Linear Regression. Notice by default that R names our model Reg Model 1. That is completely fine to leave alone. We will need to select our response variable. Remember that this is our Y variable or dependent variable. For our example, we need to use satisfaction. We also need to select our explanatory variable, also called the X variable or independent variable. In our example, this is anxiety. After choosing our two variables, we can click OK. Below is our linear regression output. Our intercept is given by the value 146.449 and is labeled intercept in the output. Our slope is given by negative 37.117 and is labeled by the variable name of the explanatory variable, which in our case is anxiety. We also have the two-sided t-test for testing whether our slope is significantly different from zero. Below, there is also an f-test statistic. When we only use one explanatory variable in our regression model, this is also testing whether or not our slope is significantly different from zero. One thing to notice is that our output gives the multiple r-squared. In this class, we will use this as our r-squared value. From this, we can solve for our value by taking the square root. When we do go from r squared to r, we always need to remember to check whether our r value should be positive or negative. We can do this by looking at the direction of our scatter plot, ours was negative, or by looking at the direction of our slope, which we can also see from the output is negative. So in this case, after taking the square root of the r squared value, we would need to include a negative sign to indicate that the relationship is linear. We can also get R directly by going to Statistics, Summaries, Correlation Matrix, and choosing the two variables. You need to hit Control and hold it down while selecting those two variables, and then click OK. We can see that our R is given by negative 0.644591 in the table. Finally, we want to check the assumptions for our linear regression. To th do this, we go to Models, Graphs, Basic Diagnostic Plots. We will get an array of graphs. We are mostly con concerned with the top two, residuals versus fitted and normal QQ plots. First, looking at the residuals versus fitted, we have the residuals are shown on the y-axis, this is the observed value minus the predicted value. And we have the fitted values, or our y hats, given on the x-axis. We can see that as y hat, or the fitted values, change, the residuals are in a near constant band around zero, which supports our assumption that of constant variance for the residuals. 
and that assumption seems reasonable. For a QQ plot, we see that our residuals are mostly normal, and so then this assumption is met as well. This brings an end to our video. Enjoy your presentation.